Welcome back. 34 minutes past the hour. So Louise caught this this morning over on uh, Yahoo Finance. The headline is Goldman boosts U.S. recession odds after slashing GDP forecast, um, you know, which is kind of two sides of the same coin. Um, the uh, article by Brian Sazi, uh, the executive editor at uh, Yahoo Finance, notes, and I quote, the investment bank's chief economist, Jan Hatzius, said Thursday he now sees a 35% chance, excuse me, of a U.S. recession in the next 12 months, up from 25% previously. Uh, Hatzius thinks that while banking, the banking crisis is a concern, it will not trigger a rate cut from the federal, it, it will not trigger a rate cut from the Federal Reserve. In turn, a recession may unfold as lending standards are tightened and consumers pull back while becoming more jittery about the economy. So I don't know what to do about this. I, it, 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 how, how do you plan for a recession, right? I mean, you know, if, if like, for example, you know, if you're a relatively young person here in the stock market, recessions are great opportunities to buy more stock. You don't, you know, you don't have to sell what you've got. You just start, you know, every time the market drops another 100 points or 500 points, you buy a little more stock. I mean, you buy as it's going down continuously and, you know, eventually it'll go back up and you'll make a good profit on that. You know, rich people love recessions because they've got money to buy stock. And, you know, increasingly middle class people have, uh, you know, 401ks and things like that, a little bit of money to play with, not millions or billions, but, you know, uh, enough. So that's, that's one thing, but also, you know, this, this is going to affect a lot of businesses if we slide into a recession. Every time we hit a recession, I've been doing this program for 20 years. We have been through, I think, three recessions during that period of time. I'd have to go back and count them on my fingers. And what I can tell you from the point of view of, you know, I'm, this is a business, this radio show, and, and uh, you know, and it's largely supported by advertising. And what we see whenever a recession happens is that our advertising revenue goes down. You know, fewer people have money, fewer companies have money to spend on advertising, and they're, and they're less willing to part with it. And so, you know, we, we have, we've had tight times. I mean, there have been times in the last 20 years where, well, the first four or five years, I didn't take a paycheck at all, <laughs> which is typical with you, when you start a new business. Typically, the first two years, you don't take any money out of it. Uh, but there have been, there have been years uh, in, in the intervening periods when we were in recessions where, you know, I pretty much cut back or didn't take any money out of the company. Um, that's what you do. So, but, you know, the, the, but, you know, thank God we've never had to lay anybody off. That is going to happen, though, if a recession happens. People will be being laid off. And I am convinced that Jerome Powell, who's been a lifelong Republican and was a bankster, is, you know, completely in the bag with the GOP and would love to see a recession heading into the 2024 election. I mean, it's only a year and a half away. And, you know, if he gets a good recession going in the next six months or so, it'll take a year to flush that out. You know, recessions typically last at least a year, or the consequences of them do. And that will be very, very helpful to Republicans in the next election. I'm with Elizabeth Warren. He never should have been, uh, Biden should not have kept him on as, uh, as the chair of the Fed.